year, millions of plastic bottles, bags, and disposable plastic items are created in the U.S. Although some of these items are being recycled or reused, the vast majority of them end up in the trash or on our shores, leading to what scientific community calls the Great Pacific Patch. According to the Algalita organization, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch was first discovered in 1997 by Charles Moore, the founder of the Algalita organization, and is located between the states of Hawaii and California in the North Pacific Subtropical Gyre. As stated by the National Geographic, a gyre is the result of the Earth's wind patterns and rotation of the planet, causing circular ocean currents. Debris from North America and Asia are transported by the circular ocean currents to the center of the gyres, where they are trapped in the calm and stable waters, resulting in the Great Pacific Patch. But what is the Great Pacific Patch? As most of us can imagine, the patch consists of numerous debris ranging from metal containers to floating tires to medical waste and plastic. In the era of disposable materials, Plastic is the leading type of debris found in the gyres, which reinforce the already alarming nature of the patch, since plastic is not biodegradable. What happens to non-biodegradable materials when trapped inside the gyres, and why is it an issue? Plastic, for example, disintegrate into smaller pieces, but do not disappear, which can affect the entire marine food chain. According to Hillis, Sadava, Eller, and Price, the authors of Principle of Life, any food chain consists of odotropes, organisms capable of transforming energy from their environment and sunlight to produce nutrients. Primary consumers, animals who feed on odotropes. Secondary consumers, species who feed on primary consumers. Tertiary consumers, animals who feed on secondary consumers. Predators, species at the top of the food chain and decomposers, species who feed on dead plants or animals. The lower in the chain changes are made, the more impact they will have on the entire web. Now, let's go back to the issue of plastic debris to understand how they are affecting the chain. According to the National Geographic, the tiny plastic pieces tend to block sunlight from planktons and algaes, the odotropes, limiting the amount of nutrients they can produce from sunlight. Since the odotropes are at the very bottom of the chain, their disappearance, or limiting availabilities, could influence the entire web. Primary consumers, such as turtles and fishes, would have to compete harder for resources, most likely leading to smaller populations of primary consumers, which would lead to smaller populations of secondary, tertiary consumers, predators, and decomposers, affecting every single level of the food web. The first step is to follow the four R's. As stated by the Plastic Pollution Coalition, individuals have the power to reduce the amount of plastic thrown in our oceans by following a simple guide of conduct. Step 1. Refuse to use disposable plastics, such as plastic bags, utensils, plastic lids, straws, and bottles. Step 2. Reduce your use of plastic. Step 3. Reuse, which is in fact linked to step 2, for example, by buying a reusable plastic bottle, meaning it is made of a thick plastic intended for more than a single use, you will reduce your need for disposable plastic. And finally, step four, recycle. Although recycling is a well-known solution, some people seem to forget about the positive impact it could have on our planet if everybody took the time to dispose properly of their debris. Now, apply the four R's. Take the pledge at www.plasticpollutioncoalition.org slash action slash result to refuse in 2014. Now, if you find yourself asking, what more can I do? Another way to help stopping the degradation of the marine chain by plastic dumping is to support the Ocean Cleanup Project. Their mission is to prevent, intercept, and create efficient technologies to extract plastic debris, which would reduce the impact of plastic on the other tropes. Their project is a registered nonprofit organization entirely funded by the public. 
Their web page also includes a very interesting feature that lets you check the status of the, of the funding and the execution of each of the phases of the project directly on their donation page. So go ahead and donate on their main web page at www.theoceancleanup.com slash donation. And remember, every single action makes a difference.